Ladies and gentlemen, I come to you dressed. <laughs> Welcome to this morning's spectacular gathering of the minds. Your minds and the minds of the two teams before you. Of course, what brings us together today is crisis. And not just any crisis, the global financial crisis. Of course, by now all of us have been battered down by the news over and over again that the global financial crisis represents the greatest financial meltdown of our banking and financial system since the Great Depression. Ladies and gentlemen, as local government practitioners and experts in our fields, we know clearly and comprehensively that we've faced crises before. There's the Y2K bug, the current H1N1 pandemic, the hole in the ozone. And no doubt we're going to face a lot more crises, crises in the future. As the New Scientist magazine just recently published in its special edition on a blueprint for a better world, when humanity is confronted by genuine threats, which appears to be most of the time, we have the ability to face them down. As a species, we excel at meeting the challenges before us. And even Charles Darwin had the fortitude to say it is not the strongest of the species that survive, nor the most intelligent but the one most responsive to change. Ladies and gentlemen, let the team for the affirmative put your minds at ease. Although we face yet another form of, the, of crisis in the, in the form of the great GFC, even as governments, as we speak, are eliminating and remediating the toxic debts of financial and banking institutions around the world, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Actually, there's a light pouring all over the tunnel, providing hope and opportunity for what is truly the most important issue of our time, sustainability. Sustainability, ladies and gentlemen, the great journey all of us here are committed and involved to ensure that humanity's rapacious nature is tamed well enough to leave for future generations the resources that we enjoy today. Isn't this the responsibility of all of us in this room? Today, hopefully, you will open yourselves to the truths and the wisdoms of the team for the affirmative. How could we fail? But it will actually reveal what you already know intuitively, deep, deep down in your hearts, that the global financial crisis provides an opportunity for sustainability. It is true, our ecological and our carbon footprints have been running rampant for decades primarily because of the affluence and the abundance provided by a runaway economy. But if the GFC has provided just one positive outcome, it's placed the flashlight on the excesses of our day-to-day -day overconsumption. The stalling economy that we've heard bits and pieces about this morning has given us an insight into the thrift and the era of our grandparents and their parents. The GFC is providing a new a new resolve, a new sense of urgency about conserving, consuming wisely, to reuse and to just use and waste less. Even the ABC reported just a month ago, and Ben alluded to it this morning, new figures suggest the economic downturn has led to the biggest fall in carbon emissions in more than three decades. My fellow team members will not only provide some interesting insights for you on the slowing down of our overconsumption as a result of the GFC, but also at some of the psychological responses of local government and their communities, of their local resilience, their positive sustainability actions and responses, even as they too face up to and square off to the opportunities provided by the GFC. You'll also be privileged to have a sobering interview between two special visitors today, Captain Planet and the Minister, and the Minister for the Negative. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, during such crises, there were always small-minded, scaremongering, sad-filled individuals trying to generate fear and resistance to the changes that must occur. Today, unfortunately, those sad little cases are sitting here in front of you as the team for the negative. The negative. They will try and tell you it's not the time for change. They will tell you to be afraid. They will try and scare you that jobs will be lost and economies will go down the toilet. 
The fantasy trolley, ladies and gentlemen, is their delusion. Don't let it be yours. Ladies and gentlemen, don't be afraid. Lift the conviction of your hearts above their narrow, negative and petty arguments. Don't go for any of their inducements or the bribes. When it comes to making known your views, go for the team for the affirmative, but the global financial crisis provides the greatest opportunities for sustainability. Thank you.